I'm going to start my slideshow. So I gave, previously gave this presentation on fourth day, 2020. I made one or two changes. I'm giving it again. So I've been using fourth for many years at my job, jobs. And this is what I primarily use fourth for as a DSL embedded in a larger application. I've written the following DSLs, Creole fourth for Delphi and Lazarus, Creole fourth for Excel, Creole fourth for JavaScript, for Python, for Perl, and for VB um, slash VBA. Um, this is a little bit different from the Excel version because the Excel version is bound to Excel. Well, um, Creole fourth for VB or VBA can be used in any um, Microsoft Office project product. So um, I have Creole fourth for C sharp. Um, this has primitives only. Um, it's still under development. So my various fourths and other projects are available at the following GitHub URL. So this is my development methodology. First, I import Creole fourth into the the application I'm interested in developing. I set up a set of primitives to handle the tasks necessary. This is a two-step process. First, define a subroutine that follows a specified interfacing convention. It's usually a method that takes a global property structure as an argument and returns nothing. Next, I add a reference to the dictionary with the build primitive method. When enough primitives are available, I start gathering into high level definitions. It is possible to use multiple copies of Creole fourth for the same application, each with a different vocabulary set, which can be useful. It can also be very confusing. So I make sparing use of that. In some fourths, instructions can be defined in terms of assembly mnemonics. Primitives defined by Creole fourth play a similar role. Compiler design has no state variable. Compilation starts by pushing the immediate vocabulary onto the vocabulary stack and ends with the popping of this vocabulary. Immediate words are simply words defined in the immediate vocabulary, which the Cohen compiler will always search first. The interpreter is used by the compiler to handle the compilation. These are the compilation steps. First, compile colon sets up a new Creole word definition. It populates the name field and fully qualified name field. This is the name field plus the vocabulary it was defined in. And using a loop, it does the following steps. Looks up each word in the dictionary, builds a triplet with the following information, name with vocabulary, address, and compilation action. Places the triplet in the pad area. This is a simple list structure. The pad area contents are gone through one at a time and passed on to the interpreter. Words with a comp and PF action are compiled into a parameter field while immediate words are executed. Exec zero words comments are handled by moving the input stream pointer. Literals are handled by putting the literal handling code before the literal. Do semi pops a vocabulary stack and empties pad. So these are the possible compilation actions. Comp and PF, this is a synonym for comma. It compiles an address into the parameter field. Execute, takes an address as a stack argument and executes it. Used to handle compiling words, exec zero moves the input stream pointer, currently used for comments only. Literal, this is anything else that could not be found in the dictionary. This is what pad looks like during compilation. So I define the high level word test one, if, hello, else, tulip, then. 
So here are the words. These are the tokens that are found in the dictionary. These are the actions. So this is what compile and colon does. If you see an execute action, it puts, pushes the token onto the stack and then passes execute to the interpreter. Well, if it has a comp and PF action, it pushes the token onto the stack and passes comp and PF to the interpreter. Go to the next slide. This is the final The structure is very different from what you saw before. So here you have the zero branch primitive. This is in the immediate vocabulary. And this is the runtime code for if, the compile time code for if puts in the zero branch definition. Then you add the index zero branch jumps to, you have the hello, and then you have jump. And it jumps in unconditionally to the parameter field location next to it. It's compiled by else. And then you have the index jump jumps to do else. This just has a uh, no operation compiled into it. So it does nothing. And then tulip. This was compiled with the comp and PF definition and just pops up an alert saying hello. And then you have do then and uh, you have a, another NOP operation inserted. How compiling words work? They're in the immediate vocabulary. The immediate vocabulary becomes available when the colon compiler pushes it onto the vocabulary stack and its visibility disappears when it's popped off. Therefore, this vocabulary is always searched first it won't be prevented from action by a word in another vocabulary with the same name. They're usually defined in terms of two primitives. The first has a compile time action and the second has a runtime action. Example, if is a primitive defined by compile if. It has code to look up the token of zero branch in the dictionary and compile it into the parameter field during compilation. Zero branch is a primitive defined by do zero branch and branches to the address in the following parameter field entry if false. If true, it just increments the parameter field pointer to the next entry to execute. Advantages to this approach, simplicity. The colon compiler can be defined in about a hundred lines of code, depending on the base language. Eliminates the distinction between state smart and state dumb words. Code reuse, the compiler uses the interpreter to do its business. Here are my references. Any questions? I'm having trouble hearing you, Bill. Yeah, I have a question if no one else does. I, I'm not quite sure how the regular compiler works and so what the differences are between this, but maybe I'll watch this video again. Okay, sure. Um, most fourth compilers I know of have a state variable. In fact, um, uh, the first time I implemented a fourth, I had a state variable. Then I um, looked at some documentation by Jeff Fox and Chuck Moore, and then I thought about it and I decided I didn't need one anymore. Uh, so, could you go back to the previous slide to show the references? Uh, just a little bit longer, we can read. Sure. That's good. I want to get my arms around prior art. OK, there's a lot of prior art in this, not much original. So. So you can have you can have the same word in in 
multiple vocabularies in particular in you can have the yeah. same word uh and and then um so uh, a bunch of the core of this is is how you switch vocabularies oh you, you switching vocabularies is easy you just uh knock them off the vocabulary stack i use the word only for that or i define the word only and then uh the next step is to put the vocabularies you want onto the vocabulary stack. So uh, the top vocabulary is the current one and um, new words will be defined in it. I usually put app spec at the very top. Then I put the fourth vocabulary just below it. And then I have only, but you can be arbitrarily complex if you feel the need to. Great. Okay. Thanks for that review. I got it. So how much smaller okay. is this than the regular interpreter? How much smaller is it? Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't think my fourth is the smallest for source code wise. Uh, I can usually uh, get what I need done in about uh, um, maybe 1500 lines. Uh, I, what I definitely have is I have a, uh, lower uh word count than most fourths so um if you look at my fourth it's rather impoverished compared to number of words because what i do is i def um i have a base set then i define some primitives i need once i get to the level of like 130 150 words i start really feeling the need to define high level definitions. One thing it, it seems to go and, and really make the definition of vocabularies of multiple vocabularies as a really, if you will, low level, you know, first task to get done is, is to be able to implement multiple vocabularies. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's that difficult. First of all, I'm often working in a high level or very high level language. I didn't find it that hard to do in uh, Delphi. I didn't, um, I found it even easier to do in like Python. Um, I have to admit, but my, my uh, definite major interest in, in fourth is going to raw hardware. Uh, raw hardware. I dabbled in that. Uh, I was working with Arduinos a bit, but I'm really just a beginner in that. Well, I am too. Yeah, that's my interest. I'm actually working on um, a fourth in Verilog, and I have a, a Mikris fourth running. And so the first thing I need to do is this um, interpreter. And so the different options are really interesting to me, and I'm quite lost and have to read a lot more. Okay. I think um, my versions of fourth, I think the structure is fairly simple. Um, you might get an, a few ideas from it. Um, it might be hard to uh, bring that down to uh, something like the Arduino, though, because that's what scripting languages do. They do a lot of the hard parts for you. Um, I think the uh, vocabulary idea uh, is sound. I got the idea about it from Martin Tracy's book, but Bill has told me that he was the one who came up with the idea of the vocabulary stack. Right, Bill? No, I, I developed the vocabulary stack. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You told no. me. Okay. All right. So, um, but I... Uh, this is where I read about the idea mm -hmm. in Tracy's book. Any other questions? All right, let's uh, move on. Stop Thank sharing. you, Joe. Please, uh, speakers, and Joe in particular, send your slide deck on to Dave Jaffe. So we can put it up on our website uh, okay. with the meeting notes. Uh, I think that's uh, 
a good uh, a good thing to have available. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, have your very own copy of the uh, PDF of whatever slide decks uh, run by us in many cases. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dave uh, for the website. Dave is the uh, current sole uh, webmaster of the uh, SVFIG and FIG web presence. And a gar gargantuan task it is. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I'd also like to thank, while I'm thanking Dave, I'd like to thank Dave for uh, being the uh, program uh, wrangler uh, last month while I was out of town. Uh, I Thank keep you, telling Kevin. myself, I keep telling myself I'm going to go look at those and uh, haven't gotten around to it. But Dave kindly uh, sacrificed his own time slot uh, to uh, make room for somebody that uh, wandered in uh, without due uh, uh, attention to getting on the schedule. Uh, going forward, if you want to be on the schedule, you need to send me a uh, email uh, or text or a uh, meetup message or something uh, with a title and a two-line description. Uh, and uh, that will make everything easier for me. And what else What else is there but to make everything easier for me? Uh, <laughs> I'd like to mention that fourth day is coming. Uh, how many of you were, would be interested uh, in uh, being there in person for fourth day? So that's two of us. Okay, oh. three of us. Hi, Doug. Me too. Me too. Four of us. I would put Obviously. my hand up if I could. You just did. All right, we're up to five. Yeah, me too, Kevin. In case you haven't counted yet. Yes, I I counted you. You're you're number four. I have three or four. Of the of the. Five. I want to be number one. Okay, you're now number one. I hereby bestow by all my official authority. Oh wait, I don't have any. <laughs> all right, I, by consensus. I am not a num I am not a number. <laughs> you are number two. I am not a number. <laughs> what do you want? Information. <laughs> you won't get it. All I've got is data. <laughs> That's not really the way the line goes. It's my uh, my variation on it, and I've always felt it might be much better. Uh, information. All right. Who is number one? All right. On that cheerful note, uh, I think that's all the fourth day I'd like to uh, do other than to encourage you to uh, think about what you're going to present. I'd like all of you to offer suggestions to me by email or text or meetup message or whatever about who I should ask to present. Uh, I have every expectation that Chuck Moore will join us, but haven't contacted him yet. Uh, same goes for those people at that company. Uh, so uh, I'll also invite uh, the the two providers of uh, fourth uh, software, uh, those Brits and those uh, Southern Californians. Uh, but uh, any other suggestions? Uh, but you you guys all get the VIP invitation. So this is it. You have the VIP invitation to present. Uh, so uh, without further ado, founding president of the fourth interest group and renowned practitioner of various arts. The rest of the meeting could be taken up with the introduction to Bill Ragsdale.